Hey, get it, guys. Calvin, Cartoon Company in New Zealand. We're just letting that sun slip behind those trees over there. And as the sun's slipping down behind the trees, it stops glaring into the workshop, and we're going to check out a wiring loom for one of my customers. And one of the reasons that I make these videos is I'm communicating with my customers. I'm showing them that the wiring loom that they are going to receive, so they know exactly how it looks, the features of it, and how to install it and set it up, and see that it works and runs an engine. So one of the reasons that you'll be watching my video, probably the most important, is this might actually be your wiring loom. And the man probably knows if it's his or not, <laughs> because it's kind of distinctive. Uh, he actually brought a JDM engine, and he's in the US, and he wanted me to, to convert the standard loom to go out to the other side. And that was going to be a pain in the backside, so I suggested a, a brand new loom. And as you can see, uh, it comes out, out this side. It is, he also asked for a bit more length, as most guys would like a bit more length. And it's just clipping on to the computer from the mounting bracket. It's just on 1.5. I actually planned for about 1.4. Of course, because he is in America, we're going to have to use their measurements because he probably won't understand metric. So we have it two bananas to where the igniters come off. At present, the rubber grommet is one banana from that, and it is one, two, three more bananas to where the ECU mounts. The grommet can go anywhere, so that can be moved. So if you want it two bananas from there, it will go two bananas from there. And as I said, he is in the USA. So we're just going to pop the igniter plugs off. Made with Tesla wire. All the plugs are brand new. Someone put a zip tie down there too. And just to show that we can do it to the other way, very quickly, we'll just move it over like this. Yeah. And now, you'll notice that it is a left-hand drive loop with igniters mounted on the firewall. Oh, or on the fender. Do you call it a is it fender? In a, I call it an inner guard. It's a fender. Oh, inner fender, I think. Inner fender? I don't know. Oh. I'm, not, I'm not... We call it an inner guard over here, but that you mount the igniters in this area and make sure they're bolted on nice and tight and earthed well. Showing that it does go both ways. I'm going to revert back to going the other way because my igniters are mounted on the left hand side. But as you can see, it can definitely go into both sides without a problem. As we go around this wiring loom, I've got the airflow meter wiring here. And I've made it just a smidgen longer to allow for different air intakes. If, if necessary. Going out, that is the proper UCF20 airflow meter. Uh, 22250 50060. You see it's, it's well attached on this one. Factory coil. And you'll notice over here there's no wiring loom coming to this cam angle sensor. That's because it's tucked under here now. So I've made it so it doesn't go past the pulleys. And I really should plug this one in. And yes, it does need to be plugged in. And it comes around the front here. Cam angle sensor. Pops down to the factory coil with noise suppressor. And I feed it down and through the back here. I'm going to the crank angle sensor. And then we have oil pressure running along here. Coming out to each of the, the injectors is the wiring looms, and they can be secured firmly onto the fuel rails. And we've got the factory purge, the VCV for the charcoal canister. So it can be either mounted here, 
or it can be mounted here. His is Japanese, so it's normally mounted there. Some of the US stuff is, is actually mounted over here by the past air pump. TPS is tucked in nicely, comes out of that wiring loom that goes to the number uh, two injector. Of course, we have the earths at the back, and I put black shrink on them. And this little harness here, that goes down for a gearbox harness. It can be uh, had a gearbox harness made and connected into these wires. And they pretty much just travel along here, through here, through here, to this plug here. Got a bit of spare shrink wrap here. And that can be used to either secure it here if wanted. If you are shrinking this, use a heat gun, not a lighter, and just do it very, very gently. Of course, it won't be that side, it'll, it'll, it'll be this side, because the loom's going that way. You see here, I've got some different injectors in it. When we were going to fire this up, I'd, uh, I'd made a little bit of a blooper, and I opted to put injectors in on an engine loom that hadn't been run before, this one. And I actually had petrol dropping out of the exhaust pipe on one side. Uh, so I'll put some footage of that at the end of this, because it's not really relevant. There's actually going to be another man who's going to be watching this video with Hawkeyes, because he is getting the same loom. It won't be red, and it won't be quite as long, I've already done the relays and fuses, and it's in black braid. It also happens to be OBD2, where this one is OBD1. Normally, I don't supply the diagnostic box. It gets uh, modified off the loom that's coming off. But in this case, I have done that. And there's this back black plug here. And I should have put a black plug. I think I might have to change this one. But that is plugs in, that's the diagnostics box there. And that allows connection to the scan tool. So I've checked that and I can get live data. We've discussed this one, which is the gearbox loom. And they just transfer up and down. Uh, the black wires are in earth and the others are just wires to get from this point to over there. And this plug here, We've got a check engine light, so that's going to be a negative output. An oil light, so it starts there and comes up to here. We've got a, a water temp light, H2O. It starts there and ends up there. And we've got a TAC, TACO, tachometer. It starts there at the igniters, and they need to be CHD1 igniters, and it ends up there. We've discussed that one there, which is the diagnostic plug. A couple of other things that are really important. This one will come with a new EFI temp sensor. That has to be fitted. It's that one down in there. That one, that one down in there. I see very few of those, those temp sensors failed. However, I do replace a lot. So when I do a new wiring loom, it doesn't make any sense to me to spend this money doing nice new wiring loom with nice new plugs and leaving a 25 year old sensor makes absolutely no sense to me. So I just put in a new one. The other one that's important is oxygen sensors. My test loom is running on oxygen sensors. They are functioning to some degree, because there's no exhaust, but another bit of cheap insurance. They should be replaced, they're a service item, just like spark plugs, so keep an eye on that. Um, they aren't included in this setup, but it's something to consider to make sure that the vehicle will run its best it can. So let's show how easy it is to make all of this run. The engine harness, we plug into the ECU. And I'm using the same ECU 
that Stephen will be using. We're going to plug in the relay and fuse box. Then there's this back black plug. We just plug that in like that. And this little two pin plug, it's only got one wire in it. That's for the diagnostic side of things. We then supply voltage into this big white plug. So that will go off to uh, like the main fuse on the vehicle. I need a fuel pump, fuel pump, and fuel pump goes right on the end here. There's fuel pump there. And ignition in. I had some relays click. And then start input goes onto the, the second to end terminal. battery power check all the loom is plugged in correctly fuel pump out start in and ignition in from broom it goes and this engine that was a first cold start um, and it had actually been run out of petrol last time I turned it off this is, is my new test engine which is a UCF 20 which is the same version this loom is going on to if you watched my engine health video, you'll see that this one's actually running with one cylinder with a valve problem. And it still starts and runs like that. In the kit as well, there's a new knock sensor and start loom. And you can see it's for this one because it's, it's red. I'm not sure I mentioned, but this, this loom's made in red braid. So it's kind of distinctive for the man whose car it's going into. So often it's the case that I use uh, looms that I've set up to test other ECUs. I had this one sent to me. It's a 3A080. Um, slightly different in the pinout, but close enough. Apparently this one doesn't start and run the vehicle that it's in. So again, uh, ignition in. The EFI relay click. now run this loom up let's run the engine up to hot let's check the idle and if you do hear it popping it's, if you watch my engine health video you'll understand that this engine's actually got a valve problem we'll, we'll get around to fixing that one day but right at the moment we've got some wiring looms to turn out so it's really easy to, to install we've showed everything in there it's easy to clip onto the onto the engine and now it's ready to be, to be removed and sent out to the customer. And I'm really looking forward to seeing this one going in the car. If I find some photos of that car, I'll put them in. So I hope that's been helpful. After this, we'll show a bit of footage of uh, the, the injector problem, and we'll show that in an upcoming video of um, problems that you can have with injectors. So we'll sign off for this bit of it. I look forward to seeing this one in your car, Stephen. We'll talk to you again soon.
It's actually physically dripping fuel off that header. It's the one-on-ones on that side. <laughs> I, I might put the normal injectors back into it. Yeah. Where do I put them? So they're Chinese injectors. eBay specials. Fuck. Well, they're just a, they drill with, with a... With a I wanted to do a video demonstration on them, see? Because I bought some the other day, like I bought some sets, right? Sold as genuine Nippon Denso. And two of them I think are pretty good, and one's definitely a copy. These ones? Shit. Cable ties! I was just thinking that. Probably should just give them the tap and might have fixed it. It was working like a tap. Yeah, sometimes yes. Well, yeah, now you can stop now. I don't want to stop. I can't see what's happening. Hey, Woo! Yeah, touch those two. Yeah, yeah that, that one's working it's all the time. Really well. It's not injecting, it's fucking yeah, it's, it's, it's hyper Oh, you can't take it off because it's not actually turned on. No. Look, okay. That, we yeah, understand. There's fun. now petrol leaking all over my floor. <laughs> well, awesome. it's just that one. All over the battery. Hit it. See what happens. Okay, I'm on. I'm down with that. That was a that was a no go. Yeah. I don't think we'll be firing this up for a little bit, and it's going to stink the workshop out, eh? You might want to put the plugs out of it. Go. No, she's still, she's still just pissing. So 240cc fucking... 250cc fuel leak. I've... It's probably put about that much fuel in this engine too now. <laughs> Enough to go at the exhaust. Cheap, shitty injectors. I think we're good. But I'm still not going to fire up till tomorrow. Until there's no petrol fumes in here because I'm a little bit high, eh? Oh, woo. Good night, see ya. As I'm whipping this intake manifold off, I just thought I might just uh, yabber a bit of information that might be handy to a few people. The light's probably going to be crap, but I'm not too bothered at the moment. Uh, now, taco signal. So, taco. Taco comes from the igniter. And a fun fact on 1UZs is, is number one relates to everything to do with number one cylinder. So, so number one igniter, where the taco comes from. Number one knock sensor, which relates to number one, so it's on the same side as number one cylinder. They all relate to that same side as number one cylinder. I doubled up. But... Um, and so the igniter on this one is like the output that would come from a coil from a normal like a four cylinder coil so if you've got a vehicle that used to have a distributor especially a four cylinder vehicle and it had a four cylinder um, engine in it oh, i'm getting confused uh, and, it, and it had a, a normal distributor and the taco was driven by the output from the coil then a 1uz Taco output is going to do the job. If it was driven from the ECU, chances are you're going to need a converter box. So just keep that in mind when you are doing um, your wiring and setting up your wiring looms into your vehicles. I just got a little bit of shrinking to do in here and you can see that it will uh, have a clamp there and there lovely lovely just sits on there like so cable ties and it goes nice and easy also in here you will see um, a knock sensor loom and this one is black uh, there is a red one that comes with this loom. And the core, the injectors, and the injector plugs, they are actually, have got a, the numbers engraved on them for which cylinder they go to.
and the oxygen sensors, you probably can't see much under here, have also got left and right engraved. I want you to think of your engine like a woman. And the distributor caps are its boobs. Got that? This is my left hand, okay? But that's her right boob. You're allowed to touch her right boob. This is, this is my left hand and, and this is her left boob, okay? That's her, her front. That, that, that's her bum. Why do guys have so much trouble with left and right of engines? Okay, if it was a woman, they'd know exactly which boob they were going to touch. With an engine, they get all mixed up. Go figure. You'll also see that I tuck the injectors, the injector wiring, in behind the fuel rails on the, on the back side. They can go over the top if you want. Or they can come through the center and pop up to each one. But I prefer them along the back. Up to you. It's your wiring when it goes in. Just make it look neat.